What is going on, guys? We are back with another video today talking more about Madden 22, and they dropped the Gridiron Notes for franchise. Of course, I'm not 100% sure exactly what this is going to be because, obviously, uh, I don't want to look through it beforehand. Maybe I should have because maybe this is going to be completely scrapped, this video, but in case not, Welcome. Welcome back to another video. Of course, we've been talking a little bit about Madden 22 the last week as we've been seeing more reveals come out. And I'm still posting a lot of Madden 21 content, so don't you worry if you're, you know, a, a returning viewer or you're a new one. Maybe, if you are, maybe think about subscribing to a ton of Madden franchise. Obviously, Madden 22 will be the next one. Uh, it's time for another edition of Great Iron Notes. This time we dive into major updates coming to franchise. Make sure you take a look at the official Great Iron Notes if you haven't to get a full rundown now. These are going to be a lot of things that are in franchise. You know, the staff points, tr uh, talent trees, you know, types of talents, all this stuff. So it looks like some of the stuff could actually be, uh, you know, new. I'm not going to go through everything. Uh, I will post this in the comment section, uh, you know, hopefully a pinned comment and the description because some of this stuff I have already gone, on, gone over. Some of the stuff you could see in the trailer and all that. So I don't want to go through everything if it's old news, quote unquote old news. Uh, but you can see here there is a uh, franchise staff, which, you know, we've already seen, but uh, you obviously have your coach, your coordinators, and uh, they all have talent trees, the player personnel and your talent trees. So uh, obviously there's going to be game day goals, and there's talent trees. So obviously the tree is what you use your points on that you most likely earn from the goals, which are the staff points that you're seeing right here. Brand new franchise currency called staff points are earned through playing games, meaning selectable gameplay, uh, game day goals, and completing scenarios. Uh, when you get objectives and milestones done, you'll get more staff points in a singular pool, which means you can upgrade any coach character once you have earned enough points. Upgrading your staff comes in form of purchasing talents on each character's talent tree uh we are also a included a league setting that lets you modify how many stat points each talent costs this way each league has the flexibility to determine how quickly and slowly gamers will be able to purchase points also this has been one of the big pro um, things that a lot of people have been arguing and you know whatnot about furthermore staff points are not purchasable purchasable with real life currency staff points can only be earned through playing games meeting selectable gameplay goals and completing scenarios. Now, the problem with this one is, hey, I love it. That's that's what we want to see, but technically you can because the pre-order bonuses are different for staff points, which is completely contradictive, but hopefully, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, there's nothing really to hope for. You know, It's just simply put, technically they are. Obviously, it's not going to be that big of a deal, it seems, and I think you can turn the pre-order bonus off in your league, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, also, talent trees replace our old coach system, you know, which was really, really bad. I will say this actually makes it where having a real coach or upgrading your coach actually matters because I've seen some of the upgrades. And, uh, you know, you can see here Seeker Remedy decreases multi week injury recovery time, which is pretty slick. You have uh, this pliability increases injury rating for all defenders. You have here increased rating, injury rating for all offensive players. And then you have trade discount on older players. But those are just like some of the basic ones, of course. The coordinator ones. I don't know if this is all for the coach, which you can see it's for the head coach. I don't know if this is for upgrading your players as well, but I know there are ones that upgrade your players, as we're about to get into right now, it seems. Types of talents. There's about 60 unique types, and uh, have multiple, some of them have multiple tiers, which means about 95 talent purchases. Try and grow, capture what makes each player unique. Uh, we broke down talents down into four categories, player growth, staff changes, improvements, uh, on-field performance, and player acquisition slash retention. So this one seems to be kind of like coach stuff. Uh, this seems to be coordinator stuff. Uh, this probably coaching again. And then this one could be all of them, but also mainly the coordinators, I would imagine. Um, the head coach focus on over... Well, like, here you go. Uh, over you know, The head coach uh, oversees the growth and development of their roster and staff. So, obviously, uh, you know, you have this. The offensive and defensive coordinators prioritize the on-field production. So, this is like tr um, weekly strategy. So, it seems like the coach is for XP. The coordinators are for actual boosts. As you can see here, uh, a boost DT block shed by three or boost left end block shed by three. Sick. Okay, sick. As you can see here, some of the examples of the talent trees. You can see here increases XP gains for free safety and strong safeties by 10%. And then if you get the second tier of it, by 20%. So if you love your safeties, you love your linebackers, whatever it may be, 
you might have an option to upgrade those with your uh, staff points. And uh, you can see some other examples here. Secret Remedy, that's the injury one, I believe. And then that one, you know, same thing. Uh, lastly, the player personnel department is designed to build your team up through trades and free agency. Some of the perfect personnel favorite trees are in these trees include trade discount for older players or scheme fits have more interest in signing through free agency, which, you know, we, we've seen this one before, you know, that that's just been in general in the game. But now apparently it seems like it you might get more interest, perhaps. And then they have more powerful traits, which is at the end of the talent tree. I've seen some of them, which are pretty sick. I think one of them was offensive linemen. Uh, every offensive lineman was a plus four to strength, which is obviously very massive. Uh, we call these renewable and ultimate talents. Ultimate talents are stronger as they're essentially rewards for completing a tree, which is kind of like an RPG element. One of the most intriguing rewards is access additional focus player slots through weekly training, which is actually really sick. Uh, obviously, we know you get a lot of XP for focus training. Uh, additional player slots, so multiple, maybe up to five or something like that. Who knows? The renewable talents take us that a step further. These talents can be purchased multiple times, but have a cooldown that could be anywhere from one week to once per season. We'll keep the renewable talents under wraps for now, so you have the exp Okay, that's interesting. So that could be kind of cheesy. The renewable talents, which obviously costs uh, staff points, but... You know, maybe you have a really big... Man, that's going to be really strategic. I hope they don't get a little, you know, too crazy with... Like, I hope they aren't affecting speed or excel. I think those are boosts that should just not be affected at all, ever. But we'll see what they... You know, that's their idea. You can always... I'm pretty sure you can turn all this off if you want. I think. Maybe. Or you could just make the staff points really slow to gain, I guess. All right, so for the staff movement one, they're telling you about how you can sometimes get luckier with uh, coaches that already have a bunch of upgrades in place. Or if you hire someone brand new, I believe you get a uh, signing bonus or a staff points signing bonus. Uh, the amount of points inversely related to the number of talents that the coach currently has. Uh, so it seems like you can get very lucky with the coaches, which I've in the past. You know, I re fire someone so that I can have a world-class regression guy, uh, which I think is the trainer, I believe. I don't know, but obviously, uh, you know, paying attention to the firings and firings is going to be more important than ever. Uh, you can see here you get... Uh, in the offseason, you can hire coaches from an expanded pool, which will feature an ability to hire former head coaches as coordinators and vice versa. So you can you make like if you like, let's say you really hate like Andy Reid in real life, you're like an Eagles fan or some weird, weird business. I don't know. And uh, you want to just make him your your coordinator. You could in theory if, you know, the Chiefs uh, user drops him. That's kind of that's kind of strange. I like that, though. I like that idea. Of course, for scouting, they aren't really going into it too much, but obviously that's going to be something... Uh, ooh, this sucks, right? So this is one of the questions people ask, but scouting and franchise seems like it's not going to be technically available if you want to do a franchise until after the title update comes out. It says this will require players to restart their franchise in 22 after the title update you got to imagine they're going to try to aim for like a September 5th or so up, you know, really early September. That's that's what you're assuming. That kind of sucks. My, it might affect our online user league. I'm probably going to just start a franchise right out the gate anyways. But, man, scouting is pretty big, so I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. That's actually a really big L, but at least it's September, and it's not like December they're coming out with it, I guess. But obviously, this seems like there's a lot more scouting stuff. We've seen that actually in the franchise video, I believe, where they're talking about, uh, you know, going to different regions and all that. And, you know, and there's a lot planned for scouting, simply put. And then for weekly strategy, it's definitely more in-depth. I'm not going to go super far into it because, as you can see on the scrolly bar, if you can, uh, this video will be a long time if I read everything out. But basically, with the weekly strategy, instead of going... You know, you want to practice on mid blitz and deep passing. It's more in depth where it's like, do you want to defend inside runs, outside runs, you know, short, medium pass, contain the QB, all that stuff, obviously. Uh, and you can see here's some images of what that looks like. You have different bonuses and uh, cons, I suppose, pros and cons for the style. Obviously, you have the same thing for offensive game plans on how you want to uh to play obviously which will have the you know same pros and cons kind of thing which once again i think hopefully isn't broken because it, it does worry me a little bit that like they have the pros and cons because it is very easy to adjust in game plus there's probably gonna be metas where everyone's running the same thing because it you know it helps more than just one thing out whereas you know let's say run outside like i imagine 
focusing your defense on running outside is probably not going to be a good idea. Most people run to the inside or they just don't run at all. So you're going to have cons for that. And, you know, you're going to want to focus on what the opponent does the most, which, of course, they did mention. I think most of this, if not all of this, is going to be next gen, though, like the stats wise. Uh, hopefully, a lot of this stuff, the base stuff, is at least in the quote unquote last gen game, and the stats are just an add on. But obviously, you're going to be seeing next gen stats. I wonder how next gen, though. Are we going to see like exactly how often they go to a certain depth? Because that's what it looks like. But I don't, you know, it's one of those I'll believe it when I see it type of things. And of course, they do have a player health thing. So uh, you can still do free practice, I believe, but there is a new fatigue type of system. So it's not just simply oh, I avoided injury last week, I'm good to go. There's going to be a fatigue going into the next game. So obviously, I don't know how that's going to factor into its leagues that aren't 15-minute quarters. Like I don't know if EA would assume many leagues are. I'd imagine most leagues are like 10, 8, 5-minute quarters. So I'm not sure how that's going to work. And of course, I would imagine you could change that as you know there is a fatigue slider, at least there was in previous Maddens. So now there is fatigue level and their chances of being injured uh, in practice and or, uh, you know, in the actual game. Also, you can see that uh, there's also wear and tear throughout a game. As you can see, for example, a running back with 92 speed at the start of the game may not be able to reach that speed in the fourth quarter if he has a bunch of carries earlier in the game. The question is, though, how is that going to affect defense? Because obviously on offense, you can definitely sub in more players in a franchise, but in, in Madden, in franchise, defensively, you're not going to be able to get away with that. You know, in real life... Uh, you know, a star linebacker is obviously really important, but you can probably get away with, you know, a backup linebacker coming in here and there. But in game, let's say you put your backup cornerback in a little bit to to rest them. I don't know if that's going to work out. I feel like you're going to get absolute torch, right? No, by no matter what, you know, as long as the other team is a fast wide receiver, you're going to get torch if you have to sub out your defender. So, of course, during the franchise season, all players will end the game at a degraded fatigue level that we brought over into the managed player. So, is I wonder how good is it going to be like, if I play my running back for like two snaps and then I pull him out because it's just not a running type game, is he just going to get an automatic like fatigue percentage or is it actually going to be per carries base? Also, it should probably be how successful he is, right? Like in theory, if a running back is doing well, that probably means that they're feeling it. They're not really as fatigued, right? So I wonder if that's going to play a factor or not. Uh, as a coach, there are two choices you can make each week. Practice intensity and player reps. For practice intensity, you're choosing how hard you want your team to practice each week, which means either full or half pads. Full pads will give you higher practice XP and game plan focus boost, but will lessen fatigue recovery and a chance for practice injuries. So honestly, with stuff like this, this is kind of like an above and beyond thing, right? Like, I don't know if people really ask for this, but it is kind of a sick and very realistic factor to the game, right? So... You know, props to them on that. Maybe a lot of people did ask for it, and I'm just slow, but it feels like it's just, just kind of like an added bonus, right? Which, you know, it definitely, definitely adds to the experience, obviously, because I will admit, injuries are just super random, and there's a reason why a lot of people turn them off. Obviously, for rebuilds, there's so much going on in the new game anyways that I probably will still keep injuries off. Like, hopefully you can turn all that off, because I don't know how rebuilds are going to work. They're already looking kind of like kind of iffy going forward like they're kind of tough to they're gonna be longer to make for sure but uh you know tougher to manage because there's a lot more into it each week uh like am i gonna have to actually like go into the game plan each week or is the game gonna auto do that you know there's there's a lot more into the game now where you can't just kind of start up and go which is obviously good of course they have different um options for practice reps as well where you can have three options for starters splitting backup so obviously you can uh just have it where your main starters are practice they're going to get all the uh, the focus and all that, but their fatigue is going to be higher. You can split it, or you can just do backup. So I'd imagine split is probably the way most people are going to be playing it. But the thing is, you can see here, there's like it says each player will earn back a certain amount of daily fatigue recovery on non-game days. So are we going to actually see like instead of being a weekly practice, it's going to be multiple practices? How does that work? You know, like because because normally it's like okay, you do a practice and then you're playing. You can't be talking about the bye week because the bye week is in a non-game day. It's a non-game week, so I don't know. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be interesting to see players on the playing on the road is also a factor as you will have one less daily recovery day for road games to help simulate a travel day. So it does seem like the schedule is gonna be kind of like NBA games where you have you know certain things to do each day. You could practice if you want or not. 
but obviously there's a game day and then breaks in between. Uh, obviously, this is the player health, the managed player health thing. Obviously, you have full pads. They have the half pads option, obviously, and then you can see the reps. You can have it where the starters, the split, or just straight up backups play, which obviously affects the XP, the fatigue, and the focused uh, boost for obviously playing that certain style. And then apparently for the focus, it isn't just up to five. You can actually get up to six if you earn that specific uh, skill tree thing. And for the season engine, which is uh, the breakouts, quote unquote, or not just the breakouts, but the, uh, what is it called? The player scenarios, whatever you want to call them. There's 30 new scenarios, apparently, that will happen throughout the season, preseason, regular season, playoffs, or Super Bowl. Each scenario has context-based uh, trigger conditions, meaning that what happens in your franchise is going to dictate what happens for the scenarios and what kind of experience scenarios you're going to get. So seems like there's going to be more scenarios. Uh, hopefully it's not just like straight up breakout stuff. It could be negative stuff as well. Maybe contractual issues, maybe XP. I'm not hundred percent sure, but obviously it's nice to see that they're adding to that. And then for the module cinematic. So instead of it just being like, you know, a text message kind of thing, you read it and you like, you already know what's going to happen. Uh, it's going to be actual like scenarios. So you're actually going to see them play out. It seems like where they're going to be like quote unquote talking to each other or whatever. Then they have press conference. You may find your coach fielding questions about how you're going to stop one of your rival's top players or one of the players facing the media and speaking about the key of his recent rise to success. Uh, GM office. Okay, see, let's, let's take a look at these little screenshots. I believe we seen something like that during the trailers. I think it all starts with containing him. So that's a containing QB contain one. GM office. GM's office can either be a place of encouragement or promise and promise or a place filled with tension and accountability. Uh, depending on the circumstances earlier in the year, a meeting here might revolve around looking at a college prospect that is on the rise while a meeting later in the year might include having a tough conversation about what it's going to take to retain your job. Uh, that's harsh. That's harsh. Locker room environment. You'll get a sneak peek behind the curtain that will include interactions between your coach and players. Uh, of course, coach warned the team about tougher weather conditions or congratulating a player on a big game. Nice. What if that's what we're going to be seeing for DevOps, perhaps? That's what, it, that's what it looks like. We've seen that in the trailer as well. Now, this one's a little confusing because they're saying, new this year within our scenarios is dynamic actor goals. Uh, we can directly assign goals to the players involved in our stories. Those player-specific goals will be featured in many of our new scenarios and will show up in the skill goals hub. Um, upon completion, we'll be awarded staff points to upgrade your franchise staff. Previously, interaction with your starting running back would likely lead to a goal for your team to achieve 100 yards rushing. This year, that goal uh, directly tied to the player involved in the story. So maybe I'm wrong, but are they trying to say, like, for a, a breakout that it wasn't like you didn't actually have to run with that guy it was just the team i'm so confused on this one because unless i'm not reading it right this is what they're talking about for like a breakout right like you need 100 yards or two rushing touchdowns or something like that to get to star but it was tied to that player right maybe i'm reading that wrong i don't know enhance rewards another big goal we had in this season to have more impactful rewards through our scenarios uh slow burn effects like xp and morale which resulted in a scenario not feeling as worn as it could um, so boosts it seems like maybe enhanced rewards would be just like this temporary attributes boosts and nerfs uh one of the common rewards is attribute boosts or nerf for both your team as well as individual players uh so if you complete a situation a scenario your team can end up with a large boost or key to key ratings for the next game or smaller boost that lasts a bit longer conversely you could fail them and your team may suffer a ratings nerf for a number of games. I wonder if you can actually choose not to have them though. Balance is a key element here. Well, we certainly want to feel the, you to feel the effects. We don't want them to feel overpowered or in case then the nerves too frustrating. The majority of our scenarios will follow a three, five, seven scale with seven being the least common boost that will usually only last one game. The question is what kind of boost slash nerfs? Like, I mean, if we're talking like, I would assume this isn't going to affect speed or Excel or anything like that. You can't really, say like oh a guy's playing bad now he's slow all of a sudden but i mean these could be game breakingly bad I, i'm more worried about not being able to use a guy rather than being too good in my opinion because once again you know in past maddens an 80 throw power not 80 throw power and 90 throw power 80 accuracy quarterback can get the job done but if you drop from like 82 short to 81 medium 78 deep and you get a negative seven which of course they said was rare and would only last one game you know, that could completely ruin the game for you, where a plus to those isn't really going to do that much, right? I feel like the nerf is more harsh than the uh, the boost is going to be helping. 
But of course, you can also see there's permanent attribute boosts. Uh, along with temporary attributes, we'll be offering the ability for players to receive permanent attribute boosts via scenarios, which is what I mentioned in my uh, my wish list video, which is obviously the reason why it's in the game, right? They've reacted very quick, only a week, and whew, there you go. <laughs> Opportunities can range between a mentor helping a young player improve in a certain area or a star player inspiring a teammate to improve their game. And again, balance is key with these permanent upgrades. The scale we've been used is smaller to three to five. Depending on the situation, you can get a plus five to a single or a plus three to multiple attributes. But overall, this reward will follow the same logic as temporary boosts and less common and harder to achieve in the low end. Yeah, so that's nice to see. Not just going to be straight up, you know, dev ups, but also uh, attribute boosts, which we don't know exactly what they're going to be. Once again, I'd imagine athletic stuff is going to be kind of left out of that. X factor activation outside of range. We wanted to make a way to reward your player. Um, in our game plan elite quarterback scenario, if you're able to shut down and beat one of the league's premier quarterbacks and your top defensive player has a superstar ability, X Factor ability is potential to either have it activate to start your next game or have it active for the entire... Whoa! That be you better... Uh, hello? That better be uh, negatable because that seems broken. If you have like an X Factor pass rusher that's sick as hell and you have it for the entire game, you'll literally win the game with something like that. Hopefully they didn't get too crazy with this. Of course, staff points, um, you know, want to translate off the field and contribute to your ability to build your coaching staff. Top scenario goals award you staff points. Many of our scenarios will offer the opportunity to earn bonus staff points to purchase talents for your upgrade. So off. Yeah, okay, so fair enough. Joining our legacy breakouts will be called tiered breakout scenarios. These new scenarios can potentially span multiple weeks. An elevator player, not just a dev trait, but multiple dev traits if they have sustained, sustained success. So you can get more than one dev up if you're lucky. Interesting. XP and morale return as potential rewards this year, but we more use to supplement other rewards rather than being the primary source. However, in many cases where XP or morale is the primary reward, we aim to make it more worthwhile and match the level of impact you'll feel from the other. I just hope offensive linemen are upgraded better. I'm just being honest. Franchise hub, I'm not going to go into this too much. This is really just the overall UI, the way it looks, which definitely, from what my I've experienced, definitely seems better. Uh, which, I, once again, I think we're still in that look. Uh, so you can see this is you know where you're seeing different things, the new managed staff activities where you can see. So really just new UI, uh, the home tab, game day. You can see all the different things uh, from the tabs. It, le it definitely looks a lot better. I can 100% attest to that. Uh, the news tab is better too. You can see the all the top stories rather than like four. You also have the tweets and whatnot. News tab isn't like super great, but it is it is improved. And then the league tab, definitely a much better tab. Obviously, you can see the schedule for everyone rather than having to go all the way down and scrolling. Looks so much better. It's it's ridiculous uh, how much better it is. It should have been like this from the start. Uh, you also have the stats leaders for most things. Of course, you have all your options and whatnot. The new members uh, screen looks a lot better too. It's a lot easier to see and you know manage. It looks a lot better in general. The bl the black looks so much sicker. I think the thumbnails in general are going to look better as well. So we have quality of life improvements, basically. Uh, draft logic after expanding on the 21's uh, QB draft rules post-launch. Uh, there's more logic in the first round across all player positions and improved decision-making when on the clock. Teams will now consider what pick they have in the first round when determining what player positions they would consider at the pick. It's great positional value and tendencies that mimic the NFL draft. So uh, apparently just better draft picks. Better draft picks, apparently. Uh, draft class generators, uh, new Types of players have been added to the rookie draft cloud generators to add even more variety and create memorable prospects to get exciting about draft, excited about drafting, especially inside the top 10. These players represent the same kind of can't miss prospects that the draft makes the draft season so thrilling to follow. And they can be found at multiple positions. In addition to higher ratings to represent their pro day repeal, they have also improved chances of high depth. So that's one of the big problems, obviously. You know, um, the thing is, I don't feel like this needed to be touched. I think maybe the devs for certain positions. But overall, it felt like the top 10 had really good players. I, I don't feel like they needed to make this any higher, honestly. I feel like this kind of baby mode almost at this rate where, I mean, last year, the whole first round outside of Dev was basically better than most Madden classes, Madden rookie classes out the gate, right? Other than, once again, Dev, offensive linemen. That's what they got to upgrade. Made updates to the balancing of development traits in generated draft classes. Overall, increasing the chance of a high development trait player over the first three rounds at a rate similar to real life rookie ratings and improve the quality of first round generated players per community feedback. So later on players hopefully 
aren't going to feel just as good as second and third round players, specifically over once again, O-line, please fix those. So here, this is always a, a hit or miss from EA. Uh, we've added variable amounts of regression randomness to the... Oh, God, randomness. I hate that word. Where a player's exact amount of regression could be accurately predicted in advance, negatively impacting team-building strategies. Players will have a base amount of regression according to their age to ensure players ultimately do not phase out over time, or do phase out over time. But with new random chance modifiers based on a player's dev trait, the exact amount of regression player will encounter is no longer linear. Many players can regress at different times at different franchises. So hopefully that doesn't mean age was changed. What they're getting at there is that, you know, uh, an example was I tested Brandon Linder before I traded for him in our Rams league because I knew he would last about three or four years. Once again, that was more of a lineman type thing, I think, rather than just positionally. Maybe Travis Kelsey would be a better example because he always lasts super long in, in sim, but you get really unlucky, apparently. that Basically, it translates to you can get really lucky or you can get unlucky with regression, uh, but I'd imagine age and dev is still going to be pretty linear other than, you know, the obvious per position or per player. Uh, but else we have... Uh, uh, players still have the base random modifiers. Yes, true. Uh, then we have could be two X factors in a league that are eligible to regress. One goes down four overall, and the other one may only lose one. So players may appear to regress sooner than others entirely. But what determines that? That's the problem. Like I get it's randomness, but why does the random? Like I don't want randomness. I want it based on how they perform, right? I don't know. But also we have end of season development trait regression has also been received tuning updates to address multiple issues of high rated players occasionally losing dev where they should not have been considered for regression. Once again, I'll see it when I believe it. Logic to regress uh, will still generally favor the top rated players at each dev trait to keep your superstar X factors challenging to overcome. But this will, with more consideration for younger players, when logic runs to help players who may not have had the high overall have a better chance to keep their traits. So it's not just higher overall with high dev keeps their trait as long as they're they're good with dev. They're fine. They also have changed XP rewards for uh, different goals. Uh, they've turned off drive goals from the in-game experience, and all goals will come from scenarios, game plan, or stuff. Drive... I mean, I kind of like drive goals, though. I don't know. Trade logic and value. Elite non-quarterbacks also received a value increase to address feedback and community. Uh, remember, though, overall is only part of the stories. Well, I mean, depends on how many years you're playing, I suppose. Uh, but still, it just seems like age, uh, overall, and dev, they, they improved it pretty pretty much, right? They also have uh, the 17-game season. I would hope so. They've also had uh, the jersey rules. More players change their jersey in real life. Players will continue to up that. So. Franchise av available features for Xbox One, PS4, PC, and Stadia uh, will be franchise staff and points, weekly strategy, Franchise hub and then season engine weekly strategy for uh, will not have gen so so like we said it's pretty much you're gonna have the same experience but you're not gonna be able to see next gen stats so that I mean that's pretty fair I expected that uh, once again we didn't go over it completely maybe some of the stuff you want to look into yourself a little bit deeper once again take a look at the description or the top line of the comments section the pin comment but I like what I seen it was actually very in depth. Uh, there was a few things I would like to see. I would like to see relocation teams, and I'm going to be honest. I feel like they just completely forgot about them, which is a major L. But hopefully that's something they can add throughout the year. I mean, their graphics designers are obviously sick if you look at their ultimate team uh, content. So I imagine it wouldn't take much to at least add something there to tide us over before a true like create a team or create a logo and all that stuff comes into the game if that's not something they're planning uh, but yeah, I mean, I don't know if there's anything you guys would like to see in this in this gridiron notes, but I think they pretty much covered everything that I know would be in the game, and they went in depth about what it's going to look like. Of course, I'm pretty excited about the game. I think there's going to be a lot of changes. It's definitely not going to be a year where it's like, oh, it's the same game, upgraded graphics. It's definitely definitely way different for franchise, at least. Uh, you could definitely just see it without a doubt. You're just you're just crazy if you don't. Uh, but yeah, I mean, okay, that's that's the Gridiron Notes for Madden 22 franchise. As far as other franchise news, I don't know if we're going to see much in the future. I feel like they actually dropped a lot on us this week, which I appreciate. And uh, obviously, I do love Superstar KO, and I play the yard from time to time. That's a lie. I really don't. But Superstar KO, if there's anything new or cool about that, maybe I'll do a video on that, and maybe we'll do all the videos for all the other stuff. We'll see. 
But yeah, let me know your comment section, your comments in the comment section below. If there's anything uh, that was in this and I didn't give my opinion on it, ask me and I will respond. Or just in general, any question at all, as long as it's within the realm of possibility or, you know, quote unquote respectable, uh, I'll, I'll respond to it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Should have another video out later today. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys come back for next video. But until next video, see ya!